just a quickie. Love a quickie in the morning, that's for sure. Uh, going to give you the answer to the question that has puzzled mankind since the beginning of time. And that question is, what's the first thing you know? Okay. Max, hey, over here. Over here. Come here. Get over here. You stay on this side of the yard, dog. <clears throat> um, but before I get to that, just a couple of quickie things. Uh, Sunday morning, good Sunday morning to you. Uh, we're just going to be getting out. We're just waking up. It's not even 7 o'clock yet. I'm just getting shit together and getting my coffee down my gullet. Mm. That percolator, I'll tell you what, that percolator, now that I've been working with it for a couple of weeks, it's just the bomb. It makes such great coffee. It's unbelievable. There's something over there that he keeps going after. What are you looking at? Knucklehead. Oh. Neighbors have a mattress out there. Bulk trash is coming. And uh, he's all over it. There's something on that mattress. Dog piss or something. Anyway. Um, God, we're going to train of thought. <laughs> Nice. Well, I'm gonna end up cutting that out as soon as I can remember what the fuck I was talking about. Sunday morning. Coffee. Oh, percolator. There we go. Um, yeah. That thing makes the best coffee. And I know it's, you know, cooking it 10 minutes or, well, it, it, it percolates for, uh, you bring it up to a boil, it takes about 15 minutes to get it up to where it needs to be percolated or where it can percolate and then another 15 minutes on a lower flame it's just smooth it's just so good oh if I, you don't have one especially if you don't have one for camping or survival um, that's definitely something high on the priority list if you're a coffee drinker um, I would imagine that you could put tea in it green tea and uh, do the same thing. I, I totally recommend it. I, I can't wait. I'm going to try some green tea in it and uh, see how it tastes. But uh, I'll bet you it tastes the bomb. Um, okay, so getting back to it. Um, what's the first thing you know? And I will be giving you the answer in a minute. I want to keep your attention here. Uh, again, we've got Carol, the beast mode gonna go out and shoot that first thing today awesome how intimidating would that be <laughs> staring down the barrel <laughs> of that um, yeah I don't think I would be arguing with anybody with that bad boy bad girl whatever you want to call it anyway um yeah we're going out soon a couple hours go out uh, it's supposed to get some rain this week Big time rain, and uh, I don't know. I want to try to take my son out next weekend uh, for run and gun. Took him airsofting yesterday. My time has been so limited lately. Um, I haven't seen him much uh, because of work. And uh, now that I got a couple of weekends, I'm going to. Uh, well, we went airsofting yesterday. I was shooting today or zero zero in some uh, sights, optics. My uh, hollow sun. It's going to get sighted in. Uh, my magnifier is going to get put back on. Uh, the thing of it is, the magnifiers, guys, if you don't know, uh, the magnifier isn't uh, something that has to be zeroed, okay? This just goes on. Now, it does have windage and uh, elevation adjustments, but that's just to get your uh, red dot, or in my case, my chevron, um, kind of centered in the sight picture here. Okay, in the reticle. You don't, this does not do anything to zero in. So I can just take it on, take it off, take it on, take it off. I don't have to zero this at all. It's just a little annoying if the uh, red dot or whatever is off center, and that's what the adjustments on this are. They, it does nothing to uh, adjust your sight. 
So I'm gonna bring my red dot back on the M4. I'm gonna bring it back a little bit and uh, get a little bit better sight picture because of the gap in between this and my hollow sun was probably maybe two fingers, maybe three fingers. It was it was a ways. Um, I liked it just because I was able to get in between the glass and clean it if I had to. Um, but you know, being that this is a flip sight and I can set it off to the side, I can clean this and I can clean my optic. So you know, I don't really need it far away. I think I up close. I'll have a better sight picture on it. So that's the thing on that. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna help uh, the contingency plan zero in the uh, 30-06, and I think he's bringing his uh, Bear Creek Arsenal um, M4 out and uh, zero that. And then uh, I'm gonna play with uh, Carol here a little bit. But, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, interesting stuff. If you haven't seen uh, the Contingency Plan's new video or latest video, you uh, might want to watch it. He's got some thoughts on uh, draining the swamp and the deep state and things that Trump are doing that I had no idea that that's what he was doing. I know that's what he was saying when, when, on the election or when he was running, he's gonna drain the swamp, and then he made that a big deal in his campaign. And uh, he's doing it. He's also lowering taxes, he's also getting rid of a bunch of bullshit, bogus regulations. Um, he's getting, he's beefing up the border security. Get that wall. Tell your congressmen and your senators, get that freaking wall built. Uh, what else? Yeah, yeah, he's definitely exposing the shenanigans. That are going on in Washington and the deep state. So, kudos to him. I never thought he would be this good. I knew he was going to be good, but I just never thought he'd be this good. And, uh, he's just getting warmed up, dude. <laughs> he's totally just getting warmed up. Um, interesting talk the contingency plan and I had the other day. Um, would we go and fight if we were needed? Um, absolutely. My first thoughts on that though are I will defend the home front first. And what that means is I will stay here as long as I can, as long as it's feasible, as long as I'm doing some good. I would go and protect my state, my beloved, uh, Max, hey, come here, come here, Max, shut up, what are you barking at, dog, yes, you're a good boy, thanks for running over here, so I'm to beat your ass, um, I defend the state that I love so much, that's so near and dear to my heart, my lovely state of Arizona. Uh, second and whatever it took whatever the governor needed um, he wants to call up the militia and back in the 1700s the militias were called up by the governors um, they're not just these willy-nilly bands of redneck bubba's out in the forest practicing with their ARs and you know being weekend warriors no militia is just the governor calling up the citizens the armed citizens of his state to help defend the state. And uh, I'm all for it. Now if shit really gets crazy and there's some serious stuff where pretty much government fails to function or they're calling up people to uh, join the military or whatever in other states, I'm down with that. I will do it. Whatever my president wants, I'm there, um, but as you can see, well, you can't see behind you, but you know, as you've seen the house and the garage and other things, there's no way I'm taking any of this. All right, um, whether I could do it at a moment's notice and get this stuff into storage, um, that's a whole different debate. 
there's a good chance that if I was called up, if my president asked me to fight and I had to abandon this place, um, there's a good chance that I would probably just leave everything here and take what I had, you know, my necessities, the food supplies, the gear, um, things that I would have to have for survival <clears throat> and leave everything else behind. Um, that's a real tough decision for me. That's a lot of stuff that I've acquired over my lifetime that I would end up probably having to leave. Now, I would do my best to try to get it into storage, um, but if it's a shit hits the fan scenario and there's just marauders everywhere, what good is putting it in storage? They're just going to go to to every storage place out there, take it over, and start busting into things and finding stuff that they can use. Um, the six of one, half a dozen of the other. One way or another, people are going to get my stuff. Um, so, whatever. I don't have a ton. But, you know, I'm sitting there on the computer doing the editing for this video and I'm thinking, oh shit, what am I going to do with my computers? I ain't going to be able to take them. <laughs> so, I'm going to probably end up destroying them if I leave. If I have to abandon this, I'll probably end up destroying them. Um, some other things that might be useful to other people, I'll probably just leave in place and, you know what, take it, I guess. I don't know what else to do. And that's one of the, that's a very deep question and serious question that you got to ask yourself um, if you had to go and defend your country if the president called you up to defend and boot out the deep state and help drain the swamp what would you do how would you do it you know basically I'm gonna be um, you know if there is is even work if I'm still even working uh, when something serious like that goes down um, you know, obviously I'd end up, you know, sorry boss, I've got to go fight, I can't help you. And then all my tools, everything there that I can't take with me are just going to be completely gone. And when it's all over, if I'm still alive, uh, somehow I'm going to have to try to rebuild with absolutely nothing. Max, come here. So, it's a serious question, one to not be taken lightly. You do not, uh, definitely do not want to take it lightly. You've got to give it a lot of consideration, a lot of thought to what you would do. Again, my plan would be to stay here, defend this if I had to. If my governor calls us up, I'm going to go to where my governor to protect my state, my lovely state of Arizona. And if the president calls us up, I wouldn't even think twice. I'm gone. I'm going wherever he wants me. Whatever you want, President Trump. I'm there. So oh, I hate to lose all my gear. <laughs> Took a long time, a lot of money to collect shit, but whatever. Um, you know, the founding fathers gave up everything that they had to fight for this country. I don't see why I'm special. You know, I'll do the same damn thing. So, with that being said, have a good Sunday. We'll have some video maybe later on this afternoon. And uh, we'll uh, see you down the road. And stand by for the answer to the question, what's the first thing you know? And with that, I am out. Well, the first thing you know, old Jeb's a millionaire, the kinfolk said...